Alright yo, it's Krim, and I'm back with another YouTube video. So the topic of this video has been brewing in my mind for a decent amount of time, and with Splat 3 realistically only being a few months away now, I thought it'd be a really good time to talk about this now rather than later. So I'm just gonna start with this. The Splatoon devs actually do know what they're doing, and how to make kits for weapons, and they don't make random kits or do random patch notes. They actually put a lot of thought behind weapons, sub, and special design, and today I'm here to present to you all why I think that's the case, and why I believe these devs actually have gained a lot of experience over the past few years and know what they're doing by now. So, I'm going to start with weapon design, and I'm going to be using Range Blaster as my example for this. Range Blaster is a weapon since Splatoon 1 that's been commonly associated with being able to play aggressive and play for kills. But when you actually look back at its kit history for both Splatoon 1 and 2, it starts to become a little clearer that this wasn't always the intention for it. If we take a look at Splatoon 1's kits for Range Blaster, we have V-Range with Splash and Strike, CRB with Splat Bomb Kraken, and Grim Range Blaster with Burst on Killer Whale. At first glance, this doesn't really seem like anything major, but when you think about the tools range has been given as a main weapon on top of B-Range and Grimm's kits, things start to make a little more sense. Range Blaster as a main weapon has range that's comparable to backliners such as Jet Sculpture, and with its range, it has the ability to pressure from a longer range like a lot of backlines do. It can pre-fire corners because it's a blaster, and anyone who tries to swing in the corner will immediately have to deal with a lot of damage and will probably want to back away. And Splash Wall with V-Range in Splatoon 1 allowed it to hold space better and still apply pressure while having some protection. It essentially really helped Range Blaster deal with its one of its major weaknesses, which is how fragile the weapon is overall. So with its special, Ink Strike, it enables V-Range to actually contribute to pain output and help with capping zones, pressuring areas of the map from longer range on its own. And Grim has Burst Pounds to help it deal with chip damage and get people off of it that are closely spaced against it. And Grim can also use Burst as an escape option. And with Whale, it achieves similar ends to Ink Strike does, both get longer range specials that are meant to help create space or hold space for their teammates. Which means that both of these weapons were not made to go drop tiny bombs each game. They're meant to be played more subdued and hold space, while also creating space, applying chip damage, and pressure to enable their teammates. But this part of Range Blaster's design was lost because of CRB, which was far more aggressively focused, and people only saw that weapon as a way to push forward and get picks. And with that reputation, it became the entire weapon's identity. Now, Splatoon 2 supports my case even further. V-Range gets Suction Bomb Inkstorm, Grim Range gets Burst Bomb Missile, and Custom Range Blaster got Curling Bubble Blower. Again, all these specials really share... All these specials and kits share a common theme. A a you get a special that gives range the ability to create more space or hold space, contributed to paint better overall since the main weapon struggles with that, and makes the main weapon less fragile by giving it sub weapons with escape options like Burst Bomb and Curling Bomb, or specials that allow it to stall like Bubbles. Range was always meant to be played further back than it's been played traditionally. Again, it's meant to hold space, plus create space for its teammates with its main weapon, sub and special. Provide chip damage and openings for teammates to work off of through its main weapon, sub and special. And it's not meant to be played as a QR feeding aggro. The subs and specials of range are meant to make the weapon less fragile overall, as Burst Bomb gives Grim escape options out of bad situations and pain on its feet, and Curling gives CRB escape options so you can just pop a Curling if you need to leave an area. And with Curling, CRB also has another way to check corners and ledges if it chooses to charge those Curling Bombs. And with the movement, it can rotate the teammates faster all over the map. Another example of the devs clearly taking a look at the state of the game and how specials are being used in-game and how they want them to be used is Splashdown. On screen is Splashdown's patch out history before patch 3.0. Before this patch, Splashdown's most common use was a panic button to get out of tricky situations. But in patch 3.0, Splashdown was changed. The description reads, Dealing damage to a player mid splashdown will no longer could depend on internet connection quality. This change, in a lot of people's eyes, killed the special and stopped splashdown from being good. But I would argue that this isn't the death of the special, it marked a design shift. Look at the changes after this nerf. For the next several passages, splashdown got its paint increased, it made dying with splashdown less punishing, and drastically increased its damage against every relevant object in the game. After these changes, splashdown now shreds bubbles, burla shields, booyah bombs, and ballers and it already naturally cancelled every sub-weapon that lands in its radius while it's active. This includes the ability to clear bomb rushes, and if I put 1.0, Splashdown got its upwards damage hitbox extended, meaning that now it can even deal damage with inkjet somewhat more reliably. Splashdown wasn't killed in patch 3.0. Its design was shifted. The devs didn't want it, to, want it to be used as a panic button anymore, so instead they turned it into an anti-special to deal with the most common methods to break back into the map, such as bubbles, booyah bomb, and all bomb rushes. Splashdown isn't meant to be used as a panic button, as I said earlier. It's meant to be popped slightly spaced from pushes to stop bubbles, bomb rushes, and stop people from popping booyah bomb by completely shredding their armor. If you want a relevant weapon that's actually designed to take this change in heart and use it, I want you to look at K-Machine. With both Splashdown and Fizzy, it does great damage against every relevant object in the game. 
Fizzy with Object Shredder is really good since it completely destroys Splashwall with one Fizzy. And Fizzy still does a lot of damage against Bubbles, and Splashdown, as shown earlier, completely destroys them and a lot of other relevant objects. Again, Splashdown was not killed in Patch 3.0. Its design shifted, and its mount meant to be used as an anti-special. It's meant to stop pushes. On top of what I've already talked about in this video, here are some other examples to show that the devs actually do know what they're doing. So, previously, before Patch 3.0, Inkmine, you couldn't substrate with Inkmine. And, after that patch, you could now substrate with Inkmine. And between Splatoon 1 and 2, and that patch, substrafing between became an actual mechanic that was acknowledged by the devs. And shooters would also get main strafing as an intended feature throughout all of their patch notes. It would be a feature that the devs would want all of them to have, and you can see that in, through each shooter's patch notes, they all got the ability to substrafe well and had it actually work for them. And at the end of recent patch notes, it's been brought up multiple times that the devs said that they'll be surveying the state of the game for a few months, and then afterwards they'll make adjustments. Not only does it show that they actually care about what they're doing, but it shows that they're in touch. They're actually looking at the state of the game, looking at what's being played, and then making adjustments based off of that. And since, and a lot of people have complained since those adjustments are so little, but I would argue this isn't actually what they complain about. This means that we should actually be like, taking a step back to relook and reassess how we think about the game, because the devs are making so little adjustments, then that means they're happy. So reassessing the patch notes and actually looking at all the weapons, and how they've been changed, how they've been edited, would be pretty helpful, I think. And I also want to take time to explain why weapons like Sea Leader are not random. The devs don't make random kits. Sea Leader isn't random. With Sea Leader, Beacon is meant to give it a way to rotate around the map. It's meant to set up beacons as it goes along, and if it needs to jump back or rotate out, then it can just jump to a beacon. That means Sea Leader can take a lot more risky shots and go for openings. And that's a way that some Charger players I know really like to play. And with Bubbles, Sea Leader is not meant to insta-pop them. That's not what Bubbles and Sea Leader are for. Bubbles and Sea Leader are meant to be used as a defensive tool rather than an offensive tool. Sea Leader can pop them if necessary from a longer range, which can still be good, but Sea Leader is meant to set up Bubbles as a way, as a distraction and for its teammates to use. It's not meant to do insta-pops like... The point that I want to drive home with this video is that often when a weapon was made to do, and when a weapon is actually played for by the players that use it aren't always the same. Instead of dismissing kits that don't have lethals, or slowly thinking that a weapon is made to play aggressive and nothing else, I really want us as a community to look at the benefits that the sub, special, and more provide for the weapon and how they pair plus enable the main weapon to function, or what new tools it gives the main weapon to us access to. And not only just the weapon by itself, look at it in a team environment. Like, a lot of people dismiss niche or niche weapons or niche picks because they say this weapon can't work individually. It came in 1v1s, it came in fights, it doesn't have a lethal. But we often forget we're playing a team game. Look at these weapons in a team environment. You can build comps around them to enable them and make them stronger. The devs more than know what they're doing with this game, and I'm tired of acting like they don't. Weapons, specials, and subs are all made of multiple uses and nuance to be used in multiple situations. They're not as linear as people often act like they are. I really want to hammer this point home before Splatoon 3, because like I've been saying, we need to be thinkers before this game comes. We need to change how we think about the game. Like, Splatoon 3 is probably going to have some strange kits that people are going to dismiss. And instead of dismissing them, we need to not only be open-minded to giving this kit a try in the current patch, but giving it a try as the game changes and as future patches come. A weapon, is, a weapon that's bad in 1.0 won't be bad in 4.0. That's not how this works. Weapons can change. And as I was in this video, like with Splashdown, things change throughout the game. Read the patch notes, understand the parameters, and see how the game is going to shift. It'll make you a better player. Alright, and that's pretty much everything I have to say with this video. I'd really like to thank you guys for supporting me on both Twitter and here on YouTube. It's really meant a lot, and I've really enjoyed making content for y'all. want to apologize for the gap between videos a little bit, since I've been kind of going through some stuff, but I hope to be back making content and have some projects in the works. I'll be talking about how good is XXN actually, hopefully, a bit soon, but that project will be a bit delayed. If you guys liked what you saw, then maybe consider liking and subscribing. Again, thank you all so much for the support, and bye-bye.